In this video, I'm going to show you how to get Dolphin set up on a Windows PC. All right, everybody, the time has come to cover Dolphin. Dolphin is a very special emulator to me personally and the one that started this channel. So long time coming for this guy to finally become a thing. Let's dive in. All right, so our first step to getting Dolphin installed is to download a version of Dolphin. So you could choose either the latest beta version or the latest development version. I prefer to use development versions myself. And depending on your computer, you might need to download the 64-bit Visual C++ redistributable as well, depending on if you have it installed already or not. So just grab that here and then grab it for x64. So before we begin, go ahead and get that redistributable installed if you don't already have it and know for sure you don't already have it. Then just wait for it to do its thing. There we are. Now Dolphin comes in 7-zip format, so you will need to have 7-zip installed. If you don't have 7-zip installed, I will have a link to it down in the description below. But just go ahead and get it extracted. And inside you'll find a Dolphin X64 folder. So just put this folder anywhere you want it to be. For me, I'm just gonna leave it on the desktop for demonstration purposes, but just move this folder wherever you want it. And when you open it up, you will have your Dolphin install. Now there's two different ways to really run Dolphin. There is the centralized way where all of your saves and everything will go into your um, documents folder, or you can make it a portable install so you can move this folder anywhere, which is great if you wanna have it in a cloud drive or a backup drive. So for me personally, I keep all of my emulators in my OneDrive and I'm able to run Dolphin on multiple computers using the same install because I have it portable. So your choice if you wanna do that or not, if you want to make it portable, just create a new text file and name it portable. Now when you launch Dolphin, all of its folders will default into the Dolphin directory. If you want to just have everything centralized to your documents folder, uh, you don't need to make this. But for me personally, I prefer the portable version. But now we're ready to launch into Dolphin, so just double click on the executable. And you'll get a pop-up on your first launch asking if you want to authorize Dolphin to report information to the developers. So you can hit yes or no to this if you want to. I just say yes, helps them make the dolphin better, why not? All right, so now that dolphin's open, let's go ahead and get our directory set up so we can actually see our games in the main window here. So head up to config. There is a path tab up here. And now we just click on the add button and navigate to the directory where we have our GameCube and Wii games stored. So just navigate to those on your own systems where you have them. So here we go, I have my GameCube games here. And as you can see, it populated my GameCube games into the game list. Now, I had some games in a subfolder, so I'm going to tell it to search subfolders. And look, Metal Gear Solid popped up. And now I'm going to do the same thing for my Wii games. And I have one more folder for my virtual console games. So I'm just going to grab those as well. And there we go. All my games are now showing up in the games list. So if you want to have your games sorted by system, you can just click right here on the left and it'll sort them by system and name. Next, let's configure our controllers. So for GameCube controllers, you have port one through four here, and then you can configure it. So I have my Xbox controller hooked up here and then you can just map the buttons as you see fit. And then you can also calibrate the thumbsticks so that way you just get an accurate representation for your thumbsticks movement to actual physical GameCube movement to make it more accurate. And there we go. And then for the uh, shoulder buttons, you'll do them again if you have analog triggers on your shoulders. So I just assigned the same trigger to analog so you can see in the little indicator that we have analog trigger pressure sensitivity here 
And lastly, if your controller has vibration support, you can choose the rumble motor here. So for Xbox One controllers, it has all the rumble motors supported here. So we have the main rumble motors and then the trigger rumble motors as well. So I would like to set it to um, use just the main rumble motors here. So we got the left motor and then you use the operator of OR to also choose the right motor. And if you want to add in the other trigger ones for Xbox controller specifically, you could do more OR commands to do that. But then you could test it. And if it feels how you want it to, you're good. Just press OK. And then you could save a profile for any specific controller setup you want. So you could customize your controls per game as you see fit. You have unlimited amount of profiles to choose from. And for GameCube controllers, you also have the option of doing emulated steering wheels, dance mats, bongos. You can hook up a GBA emulator. You could use a GBA emulator integrated into Dolphin or even a keyboard controller like for Fantasy Star Online. Probably one of the coolest controller options though is the ability to use your actual GameCube controllers within Dolphin using the GameCube Wii U controller port adapter. So I have a video on my channel showing you how to get that set up with for use within Dolphin. So link to this will be in the description below if you are interested. But depending on the controller option you want to set, just do so here. And then you can also set up ports through two through four as well if you want to do multiplayer. Now for controlling Wii games, we start off with an emulated Wii Bluetooth adapter, but you could choose to pass through a Bluetooth adapter if you want to use real Wii remotes and attachments. I again have a video on the channel showing you how to set up real Wii remotes and attachments with Dolphin if you are so interested in doing the pass-through method. Links in the description below. But if you just want to use a standard controller, you could head down to the Wii remote of choice, click on configure, and you can set up all the various options. And you can set the extension that you want to use, so classic controller, guitars, like so so many things but of course your main ones are going to be nunchuck and classic controller so you can set your main buttons here choose your gamepad option and with rumble same thing with that again you can set the motors we have emulated motion plus support within standalone dolphin now but you can also set up motion simulation for the shake pointer tilt swinging motions accelerometers gyroscopes set up the controls for your extensions and then again motion simulation for your nunchuck and accelerometers i'm not the biggest fan of using a standard gamepad for wii emulation i prefer to use real wii remotes but all the options are here for you to set up and then again you can set it up for players two three and four but seriously passing through the real wii remotes is honestly the best but you also have the option of connecting real balance boards. You can enable the speaker data for the Wii emulated Wii remotes. They also have a legacy way of using real Wii remotes here, but this option isn't as good as just passing through a Bluetooth adapter. So if you're going to use a real Wii remote, just do the Bluetooth adapter method. And with our controller set up, we can finally start playing some games. And to do that, you just double click on one and it would launch in default settings. But before doing that, I recommend heading into the graphics tab and changing a few things up. Like the back end, it's set to OpenGL by default, which is fine. It's compatible. It works with a lot of different systems and a lot of various graphics cards. But if you have a system that is relatively newer, last five, six years, you could swap this up to Vulkan to get a good performance boost. And then if you have multiple cards in your system, you could select the one to use here. And then you could set things like the aspect ratio. You could force it to 4x3. You could force it to 16x9. Auto tries to attempt to set the aspect ratio according to what the game is set in. So if your game is set to widescreen, it's supposed to automatically be in widescreen. Then you can set the option to enable V-Sync. Helps with screen tearing, of course. And then you could also click to have your game start in full screen mode. So that way when you start a game, it's not in a window anymore. It's actually full screen. And then the next one that you're going to want to mess with is shader compilation. So by default, it is on specialized. This is just your standard dolphin synchronous shader compilation. So there will be stutters when new shaders are brought into play. So if you have a higher end GPU, 
like my RTX 3080, I can use exclusive Uber shaders. I have not had any issues using this on any games. Prevents uh, shader compilation stuttering, but hybrid Uber shaders is definitely the preferred option. And then you could check mark the compile shaders before starting. That way you just have the best possible emulation experience. And then we have some extra little things here, like you could show the FPS on your emulation screen if you so choose. I also like to render to the main window just so there's less windows in play, but I mean, that's just a personal preference. And then in the enhancement tab, this is where you're going to be able to upscale your internal resolution. So a lot of options to choose from here. This is going to really depend on your GPU that you have in your computer, what you're going to be able to push here. So try an option if it causes lag where there wasn't lag before, just drop it back down. Then you could also enable some anti-aliasing, anisotropic filtering. There are some post-processing things here. I'm not the biggest fan of the built-in ones, but you can try them out yourself. With modern GPUs, per pixel lighting is also nice to turn on. Really doesn't cause a lot of performance hits anymore like it used to. And it does result in a little bit nicer image in my opinion. Now, some of you might have seen this widescreen hack thing here. Do not turn it on. If you're going to try to do widescreen hacks on your GameCube games, uh, just use the Action Replay or Gecko codes or ISO patches instead. Like, this widescreen hack sucks. Don't use it. And if you have a 3D display, you can, uh, <laughs> you can uh, mess around with 3D stuff here. All right, hack tab. We're going to skip all of the EFB stuff and head down to Texture Cache. So... This slider is usually set by the game INI, so you shouldn't need to mess with this for the most part, but you might be interested in activating GPU texture decoding. Say you have a weaker emulation CPU, you can enable GPU texture decoding to try to get a little bit more speed back because that will offload the texture decoding to the GPU instead of CPU. If you have a fast CPU, it really won't matter either way. And then if you're going to be upscaling, you might want to check vertex rounding to help... Uh, improve the appearance of certain games. And then in the advanced tab, we can enable progressive scan. If you're using Vulkan, the backend multi-threading is already on. You want to leave that on for the performance boost. And then if you want to load up custom textures, this is where you can enable that option. I'll go over custom textures in a different video though. But now let's head into the config tab for another second here and click on the GameCube tab because there's a number of things we could set here. So we can enable or disable the GameCube's IPL if you have one dumped. So I do have a video on the channel showing you how to dump an IPL from your actual GameCube system and add it to Dolphin if you want to get access to the GameCube main menu like so. So link to that in the description as always. And then you could also choose to select what is in each of your individual GameCube memory card slots. So GCI folder makes it so you'll never run out of save game space. It is a great option for using Dolphin. If you want to use your own backed up memory card from a GameCube, you can select a memory card here and then choose the file manually. I have a separate video on the channel showing you how to back up your own GameCube memory cards and use them within Dolphin as well. So again, another link in the description below. Again, this is kind of the basics. If you want to do this extra stuff, I have videos for you on how to do it. But for most end users, a memory card or a GCI filter are what you're going to want to choose here. And then same thing in slot B, you can choose a memory card or a GCI folder. And then for the SP1, you can enable a broadband adapter either through a tap, bridge, or through Xlink Kai. We'll go over this in more detail in a different video. And if you plan on doing Game Boy Advance uh, link cable stuff, you have to set it where your Game Boy Advance BIOS file is. Again, this will be covered in a different video. All right. And then in the Wii tab, you could change between PAL 60 mode for PAL users. You can have an inserted SD card. Choose whether you're stuff is in stereo or surround mode, language, aspect ratio, sensor bar position. And then in the general tab, you can enable cheats here, which you can activate by going into the game's properties, going to the AR code section or the gecko code section. You can try to see if there's codes you could download. Some games might not have codes, but for example, Mario Kart, you can go in AR codes. Hey, everything unlocked. There we go. That code is now enabled. And because I have enabled cheats enabled in the general settings, it'll unlock everything when I start the game. But checking change disks automatically is highly recommended for multi-disc games. And then you can also set an auto update setting here. So if you want to have the latest dev builds, you can select that. And every time a new dev mode comes out, it will ask you to update Dolphin. All right, audio tab. This might be of interest to some of you who have surround sound systems. 
So you'll need to go over to DSP LLE to enable the Dolby Pro Logic 2 decoder. Now, you can choose between higher quality audio or lower quality audio, which causes a different hit in audio latency. So if you're susceptible to audio lag, uh, you might want to set this to a little bit lower quality. Then you can adjust the volume with the slider here on the right. All right, advanced tab. For the most part, you should not ever need to mess with anything in here, but you might have fun with the enable emulated CPU clock override function. So a lot of GameCube games would have hardware induced lag, like, um, Star Wars Jedi Knight 2 or Need for Speed Underground, you can enable this overclock and you can just overclock the emulated CPU to overcome any of those hardware FPS drops. And it's really cool, but it does require a really good CPU in your system to use. For those of you on really crappy CPUs, you could also underclock the GameCube uh, CPU speed which will result in lower FPS, but you won't have audio stutters and things like that. So it can really be used to overcome some system limitations if you don't mind a FPS hit. Now, you'll also see that there's a memory override down here. I really don't recommend using this. It's not that useful for a vast, overwhelming majority of games, but good to know what options are available to you. Next up, interface settings. So you could choose a default language here it's set to your computer language by default. You can set up a color scheme for your buttons. Dolphin has a built-in database of game names, so if you want your games to appear with those names, you can use it here, or if you want them to just appear with uh, the disc's built-in titles, you can choose that as well. I like to use Dolphin's database because it looks a lot cleaner. So, there are some custom themes you could use with Dolphin. I don't really use them, but you could add them to Dolphin, and then you could choose them here. Next, you could choose to download game covers from uh, the game title database for you when you're using grid mode. Show debugging UI, you won't need this as an end user, really. Hotkeys require window focus. I like to leave this on so you don't accidentally do something in Dolphin while you're messing around with something else on your computer. And then you can make it sure your screensaver doesn't go into effect while you're playing Dolphin. Next is some options for the rendering window, so you could choose to keep it on top of any other window. Confirm on stop. When you press escape or you click stop on the emulation, it'll ask you if you really want to stop. You can choose to have this on or off if you choose. Um, panic handlers will show you when emulation has some errors to them. Some games need you to turn these off, but for the most part, this is personal choice if you want to have it on or off. Show on-screen display messages. You can disable this if you so choose. And then the last important one here, pause on focus loss. So if you click out of Dolphin, you can make sure the emulation pauses if you so choose. But with everything set, you can now load in and begin playing your games. Now, just another thing to note, after you launch a game, you are able to configure some graphical settings. There's some things you won't be able to change. They'll be grayed out and blacked out. But, like, you can dynamically change the resolution while you're in a game. That way you can test multiple resolutions, see if you're going to get lag or not. But another thing to note is if you have an option that is outlined in black like that, you do not want to change it while the game is playing because it's set automatically by the game INI, and if you change it, you could break some stuff. But that's going to do it for basic Dolphin emulation setup. Again, this guide is the basics on just getting it installed and up and running for you to enjoy some GameCube and Wii games. If you want those more advanced setup things like controllers, using real GameCube and Wii controllers, getting your save files transferred over. Those are covered in separate videos just to keep this one shorter and to the point. So be sure to check out my Dolphin playlist here on my channel and get access to all of those that you might need. But thank you so much for watching this tutorial. It means the world to me that you spend even a minute of time on this channel and help us get it growing. But I do have a few further favors to ask. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to hit that like or dislike button depending on how much you like today's tutorial and hit that sub button notification bell so you can see when new videos go live on the channel. Loads of content coming your way, and i love to have you all along for the ride. For anyone interested in further helping support the channel, you can also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. A little goes a long way to keeping this place up and running and bringing this content to you. Big shout out to all of our current backers, thank you for believing what I do and helping me keep it going. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you back next video.